Welcome everyone to another episode of Sleep Science Academy interviewing the experts. I am super excited today to share with you uh, my good friend and world-renowned keto expert, Ben Azadi. So I'm just going to read off Ben's credentials. Ben is um, not only is he an amazing human, he's, uh, he's on a mission to help 1 billion people live a healthier lifestyle. He's the author of four best-selling books, uh, The Perfect Health Booklet, The Intermittent Fasting Cheat Sheet, The Power of Sleep, and his new book, Keto Flex, which is incredible. Uh, he's been the go-to source for intermittent fasting and ketogenic diet. He's known as the health detective because he investigates dysfunction and educates, not medicates, to bring the body and back to normal function. So Ben, I am so excited that you carved out some time to share your knowledge with uh, Sleep Science Academy members and people that are listening to the podcast. Welcome to the show. Devin, I'm grateful to be here. Love what you're doing. And I love you as a friend as well. So thanks for having me. Yeah. So let's, let's first just dive into, you know, your backstory. So people can get a little bit of context of how you got so passionate about health and wellness and how you got connected to the mission to help a billion people. So why don't you share just, you know, a little bit about your background, what got you so passionate about helping people improve their, their health and their life. Uh, and then we can get into some of the strategies and tools that you're using to, to really help people go from sick to thriving and well. Absolutely. Uh, I, got, I got into the health space in 2008. And, and back then I was depressed. I was suicidal. I was obese. I weighed 250 pounds. I was 24 years old at that time, but I felt like I was 84 years old. Didn't prioritize sleep, didn't prioritize health or nutrition or exercise. Didn't really understand any of that but I knew something had to change. And that change had to start with my health because I didn't have the energy to do anything. So at this point I was broken, broken, uh, mentally bankrupt and obese, looking for ways to end my life. I wanted to end my life, but thank God I kept thinking about my mom and it stopped me from pursuing that. So I started to actually take ownership and responsibility for the first time in my life. Uh, and that came through reading books. I started to read books from incredible authors like Dr. Wayne Dyer, Bob Proctor, Earl Nightingale, and it helped me really just take ownership for the first time. And, and the word responsibility is more important than ever before. That word to me means your ability to respond to life. And my ability to respond to life up until that point was really poor. I was playing the victim card, blaming my genetics, blaming my enabling family members, blaming whatever I can get my hands on. But the books actually helped me take responsibility. And I said, I'm no longer going to be the victim of my history. I'm going to start right now and become the victor of my destiny. Mm -hmm. So I put my foot down. I took action. Nine months from taking ownership, I went from 250 pounds down to 170 pounds. I went from 34% body fat to 6% body fat, size 38 waist to size 30. And uh, finally carved out a physical six pack, which is something I always dreamed of being a, ki a kid that was bullied and picked on. But the most important thing I achieved was a mental six pack. And I started to understand how important your thoughts were and how important they are and how they could determine your future. And that's what got me started in the space. Uh, that was about 13 years ago. I've evolved very much and like, like we should be evolving every, uh, every day, essentially. So I've come to different diets and programs and became certified as a functional health practitioner. And as you mentioned, the mission now here with me and the company is to educate and inspire a billion people to help them understand your body is capable of healing as long as you could do three things, which is identify the interference remove the interference and allow your body to heal. And we'll talk about some of those interferences uh, in today's discussion. Wow. Thank you so much. Um, for, it's, it's so inspiring to hear you share that story. Like I know that story, but I know that people just hearing that is it's, there's so many people that are where you once were been. They're, they're in fear, they're in doubt, they're worried. They have all these stories about what's possible um, and they're stuck. And because they're stuck, they're in a lot of pain and they're, and they're suffering and they're lost. And it's so amazing for, for people like yourself that have gone from that place, that dark pit, that dark hole, and have been committed to finding their way out and now are guiding people out of those pits 
to, to really get to where you are. And I've seen personally, you know, I've known you for a number of years. I've seen you continue to thrive, continue to grow, not just, you know, in your business, but also in your own health and your own, the way that you show up in the world. And I, I want to start off by, by really diving into like how, how, what the steps that allowed you to go from that, that being suicidal, being overweight, being, you know, in this pit, uh, not, not sleeping, not eating well to, to really, you know, believe in yourself and, and, and do take responsibility for your health to go from being the victim to the victor. So many people right now are in that victim mentality and that keeps them stuck. That keeps them, you know, experiencing insomnia. That keeps them, you know, keep uh, overweight, it's just sick. Can you share with us, like, what was it that allowed you to really catapult your way? You know, besides the books and obviously you, you were big in education, but like, what were some of the things that you found along the way for like your own mental health? Cause that's a big thing for, for people in you know, with sleep. Mm. Um, can you share a little bit about like your personal, like what, what either did you do then, or now you now know from all the research and, and studying with all the experts to help people mentally go from the pit to, to thrive it. Mm, yeah. Such an important question, especially be, so many people are, are dealing with depression and, and mental stress and anxiety more so in the last 18 to 20 months, it's, it's skyrocketed. And you're right, it affects your sleep, it affects your health, it affects all areas of your life when you're mentally, emotionally stressed out. So what I discovered back in 2008, and I'm still working on it to this day, is that your thoughts are very powerful. And the most influential person you'll speak to today is yourself. Uh, the average person is thinking 60,000 thoughts every single day. And it's estimated that 90% of those thoughts you're thinking today are the same thoughts from yesterday and the day before. They're, uh, they're called learned behaviors, uh, also known as paradigms, which are a multitude of habits that just fire on autopilot. Typically, you develop these habits during the first seven years of your life. But of course, as you move through your life, you develop them by your environment. So if you're watching a lot of news and you're, watching, you're hanging around people who are gossiping and fearful, you're going to start developing those habits and those thoughts as well. But when you change your thoughts, you change your life. Dr. Wayne Dyer said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So I started to really get conscious and aware at those thoughts that I was thinking. I used to have really toxic negative thoughts. I call it stinking thinking. And if your thinking is thinking, your dreams are shrinking, your health, your relationship, your finances. So we want to change our thoughts and it doesn't happen overnight. So there's two ways to change the paradigm that I mentioned. Only two ways that I know of. I don't think there's any other way to do it. Number one, it's an emotional impact. That's a way to change your paradigm and change your thoughts. Ideally, we don't want to go through that because it's very um, traumatic and challenging to go through an emotional impact. When I lost my dad, that was an emotional impact. It changed the way I thought. 9-11 uh, was a, an emotional impact for so many people. It'll start to change the way you think. So that's the first way to change your paradigm. We don't want to go down that route if we have the choice. The second option, which is the best option, is consistent effort. Uh, meaning, as you go through your day, starting today, start to become really aware of the thoughts that you're thinking. And when you get that self-limiting thought, that negative thought, that thinking, stinking thought, just become aware of it. Uh, don't attach anything to it. Let it pass like a cloud and then choose a positive thought. For example, uh, I used to always think that uh, I had a big nose and I'm too tall and I'm whatever. I'm too stupid. I'm too ugly. So I started to become aware of those thoughts and I would let it pass. And then I would choose a better thought. I would say, I am loved. I love myself. I am healthy. I am powerful. I am attractive. I am abundant. And people think those affirmations are silly, but guess what? The universal law states whatever you feed energy to expand. So as you start to appreciate things in your life, that actually appreciates. So what you appreciate appreciates and what you start to think about and think about via gratitude, you bring about in life. So it's really tricky and sneaky, Devin, as you know, it's when you're walking your dog, the thoughts that you're thinking, when you're brushing your teeth, when you're washing di dishes, it's those, those thoughts that are coming in throughout the day that you are not conscious of become more conscious of them and just get a little bit better each day thinking better thoughts and you'll start to change your, your life. And if somebody wants the science behind it, if you're a little skeptical, 
uh, like I was in the beginning, Dr. Bruce Lipton, a world-renowned cell biologist who wrote the book, The Biology of Belief. I interviewed him on my uh, Keto Camp podcast this year. He has proven with this research that a thought is a frequency that has the ability to cross through your cell membranes and communicate with your DNA, your, your genes, essentially. And if it's a negative thought, a fearful thought, a, a scarcity thought, then that, that uh, thought will tell your pro the DNA to produce a specific protein that leads to inflammation and disease just with that thought. But if it's a loving, grateful, abundant thought, it'll tell your DNA to produce a healthier protein. So that's something that's huge and something that I make sure I'm very consistent with is the hour before I go to sleep and the hour after I wake up, I'm very intentional with what I feed my mind, my conscious and subconscious mind, because that those two times during the day are the most impressionable times for your subconscious mind. So I'm very strategic with writing down my goals and gratitude. Not and you talk, I know you talk about this a lot too, Devin, not watching like fearful, scary movies or definitely not watching the news before bed because you'll feed your subconscious mind that and you'll start to get more fear in your life. So that's how I've been able to change it. And you know what? I still have those negative thoughts to this day. We, we all do, but if you could get better at closing the gap between a negative thought and a positive thought, you'll begin to change your, your life and your health. Oh my gosh, there's so much good stuff in what you just said. I mean, we could do a two hour pod, you know, podcast interview just on that little bit that you just shared. It's so powerful. And just to kind of simplify it down to its essence, it's you became more aware and conscious of the thoughts that were limiting possibility. And you consciously chose to see the truth in those thoughts. And, and then you started to reprogram your mind you know, in the morning and at night. To, to really see the whole truth and to start looking at what actually do you want to bring into your life versus what you have versus what you don't have, what's in your control versus out of your control. And you just reprogrammed yourself. And then that led you to the action to become who you are now, which is inspiring you know, millions of people. Um, it, it, it's, it's so, and I love that you, you also brought in the science of it. It's not, this isn't just like positive thinking, woo woo stuff. This is, there's real science. It affects our physiology. Our thoughts are things, they affect us. And we at Sleep Science Academy, we always start, this is where we start in the mind, negative sleep thoughts. People tell themselves, oh, I'm broken. I, I, I won't be able to you know, ever fix this. All these stories and or thoughts then keep the body in this fearful stress state. And uh, then it doesn't allow our body to rest. So it's, I mean, everyone listening to this, if there's one thing that you can, you know, take away from this podcast, I think this is, this is it. Uh, it's really identify what are those things that you're telling yourself that are not based in truth, that are not allowing you to get out of the pit, get out of that fear, doubt, and worry, and into, you know, healthy, thriving, and well. Um, Ben's, you're such a beautiful example. And I love your nose, by the way. It's a fantastic <laughs> nose. Me too. Um, Me too. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, 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 okay. So step one, you, you had a, you, you broke down the paradigms that weren't working. You started to, to really understand, you know, the stories that were keeping you stuck. Um, and, and then, then what, what are some other steps to get really, I would love for you to share, like what gets you out of fear? Because even like right now, you inspire millions of people on your channel, your, your best-selling books, your podcast. I know there's a lot of haters. People are coming at you daily. You know, trying to bring you down, trying to you know rain on your parade. Um, you know, how do you how do you connect to courage to keep going even when maybe you feel still afraid? Great question. Um, well, competence gives you confidence. So the more I study and apply and understand how the body works, the more confident um, I'm going. The more confidence I'm going to have. I believe your environment is the next step. So first you start to change your thoughts, but then you have to change your environment because we mm -hmm. do become our environment. It'll be very difficult to do the things that we're mentioning here if you don't change your environment. If you're hang hanging around five people who are eating fast food, going to sleep at 2 a.m., drinking alcohol at night, you're going to be that sixth person that follows along. There was a really interesting study, Devin, done on fleas, and they put these hundreds of fleas in inside of a jar they left those fleas inside of the jar for three days. They came back after three days, they removed the jar and every single one of those fleas still flew in the same pattern as they believed the jar was still there. Not only that, when they had offspring, the offspring flew in the same pattern and not one flea escaped because they were conditioned by their environment. That's what our environment is doing to us. Isn't that insane? That's insane. I've never heard that study. That's insane. 
like if you go on YouTube and just type in fleas in a jar, you, the, it's a one minute video it shows the actual exactly what happens. And it's they're like running in the same pattern. There's the jar has been removed. That's what our environment is doing to us. And uh, some an exercise that I that I do with my Keto Camp Academy students is to grab a blank piece of paper, draw a line down the middle, a line at the top. So kind of like a cross. And then you're going to write on the left side of that page, everybody in your life who's supporting you, who's charging you up, we're calling them chargers. Mm -hmm. How do you know if somebody is a charger in your life? You finish a conversation with them and you're inspired and you're energized. That's how I feel when I, every time I talk to you, Devin. Likewise. And then, thank you. And then on the right side, you put the drainers, people who are gossiping. They're telling you, why do you want to go to bed early and prioritize your sleep? Well, oh, you want to do that keto thing? That's a fad diet. Are they... They're giving you these negative remarks and it could be friends and family members, but you want to be really accurate here and do this audit, put everybody on the right side who's a drainer that you feel drained after you have a conversation with them. And once you have identified those people in your life, what you want to do is spend more time with the chargers, less time with the drainers. And as you start to change your thoughts and change your environment, now every single day you're getting better and better. And that's how you're going to make everlasting changes. It takes about 66 days, according to the University of College London, to create these new neural pathways in your brain. So as you make these changes, after 66 days of consistent effort, it's now going to be automatic. We're just going to fire on autopilot. Perfect example, real quick, of how this works. I used to always get in my car several years ago, and the first thing I would do, which was my paradigm, was to play Spotify and play music. And I said, all right, I want to consciously change this behavior and I want to open up my phone and get in the car, open up my phone. And I want to play an audiobook or a podcast. I want to take this opportunity to learn. But in the beginning, first thing I would walk into the car and I would get my phone and I would hit Spotify. And then two minutes in, I'd be like, oh, wait a minute. I, I told myself I was going to listen to a book and then I would change it to a book. A week later, it took uh, about a minute for that change to happen. And then a couple of weeks later, all of a sudden, I grab the phone, boom, right to Audible or right to a podcast. So I changed that behavior after consistent effort. Same thing here with anything we're doing in our life. I love it. So environment, focusing on upgrading your environment. And, and so, you know, how some people are just, they're, 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 they're afraid. They're afraid of letting go of their network of friends that they've known since high school or college. Like, what do you tell, I mean, how do you, how did you, or how would you guide somebody to listen to that voice that they innately is already telling this person these people well we know these thoughts but these this environment and, the, and these people you're showing us with are, build, are bringing you down but they have this fear that's like this is safe this is comfortable this is what i know um, and i don't want to be uh, you know judged about what these people are and think like what would you tell somebody right now that they know they have a bunch of drainers in their life and they want a bunch of chargers, but they're just they're they're afraid they're afraid to let go of the past they're afraid to let go of what's comfortable how would you what would you tell that person or, or how did you go from, you know, being in an environment of draining to being in a charging environment? It's a great question because it's a, it's a difficult thing to do. It was for me to make that transition. Um, getting clear on your why is going to be important. I believe reasons come before results mm -hmm. and your why is not as superficial as I want to lose 50 pounds. It's a great goal, but that's not your why. It's where is that showing up in your life? Do you have relationship issues because your energy levels are not great because of your health, your poor health, then that, that could be a why. Uh, do you not, you know, you go on a vacation with your family, you don't have energy, you're hurting all the time and you're just inflamed. That could be a why. So where is it showing up in your life? Get clear on your why, write it down and keep that in front of you. So you have that when you start to make the transition. And then when you make that transition, what, what's going to happen is what you just said. People are going to make comments they're going to make either intentional comments or kind of like passive aggressive comments, because when we change, we become a threat to everybody in our lives who do not change. Mm -hmm. So just understanding that uh, is, is very important. But if you really want to get yourself inspired here to make this change, go read the book, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying. Mm -hmm. This is a book from an author named Bonnie Ware that I read several years ago. She was a nurse in Australia, a hospice nurse in Australia. And she would sit with these uh, individuals who were on their deathbed, essentially hundreds and hundreds of people. She's seen them transition from life to death. And she would ask them the same question. And she did a survey and wrote a book about it. The question was, what is your biggest regret that you never did on planet Earth as they're on their deathbed? So she got the top five regrets of the dying. The number one overall regret of these individuals was not living a life 
true to themselves, instead living a life of what others expected of them. Mm. Oh, I mean, how powerful yeah. is that? We don't want to be on our deathbed thinking that we lived a whole, our whole lives because our fan, or my mom wanted me to be a lawyer or this person wanted me to be whatever career that I, I didn't really mm. want to do true to my heart. So read that book. That'll light you up and um, make sure you're just controlling that environment. And when you make that change, be aware that it's going to happen. Just get a little bit better each day. That's the goal. I love that. Yeah, it's it's uh, taking the time to do that. I think is important too. That, that's going to create the courage. That and what an amazing. I, I heard the five, um, you know, answers, but I didn't know there was a whole book on it. So I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to pick that up. That's it's um, a great book. Inspiring. Yeah, because I the 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 why creates the desire to then you know overcome that uncomfortable judgment of letting go of the past right? And letting go of a comfortable environment and, and growth is uncomfortable. And a lot of times we, we, most people choose comfort over growth. And if you're looking to change, if you're looking to, you know, improve your sleep, improve your life, improve your health, you have to sometimes choose to be a little bit uncomfortable and no, know that that's part of the process, right? So true. And it's kind of cliche to say the growth happen, the magic happens outside the comfort zone that you see those posts, but it's so true. Uh, yeah. Everything in, in the world is either you're creating or disintegrating. Nothing stays the same. I mean, this glass bottle here is moving. We just can't see it. Everything is moving. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you make these changes, it's so important to be aware. Like we're talking about here, you, you're, you're aware of what's happening, but you're going to think, Oh, what if I make this change or I communicate to my friends that I need to leave the party early to get you know quality sleep that they're going to say they're going to think xyz well bob proctor said it best he said three percent of the population think two percent of the population think they think and 95 percent of the population would rather die than think right <laughs> meaning that your next door neighbor your friend they're not even thinking they're just going to go about their way and you're building up more so in your head than anything else nobody's living your life but yourself uh you want to get clear on your highest values your true purpose your, your dharma, and you live that life, you live your purpose on purpose, and that's where you're going to be happier, healthier, and successful. Well, Ben, you know, we, th this is, we could literally go another hour just on this. We're just like, I feel like we're just warming up here. Um, and I do want to be conscious of the time. I'm trying to keep these, you know, yeah. condensed. So we, we're going to definitely have to do a part two. So we'll, we'll call part one, mindset part two we'll, we'll talk about you know physiology some of the, the things that can maybe get in the way from us being able to sleep we can talk about ketones and how that can play into all this because you're a wealth of knowledge on the physical component of this as well as obviously the mental component um and your your inspiration man you breathe life into people and it's it's so i'm so grateful that you've um have been able to step into your purpose and power in and, and, and such a big way. And I know the people that are going to listen to part one, which we're going to wrap up here shortly, um, are going to want more because they're going to start to understand, change, change your thoughts, change your environment. That's like, okay, step one. Now what? Step two, you're going to have to wait because we're going to, we're going to get bent on part two and we're going to dive into some specific strategies, what he, what he shares in his Keto, Keto Camp Academy, as well as in some of his books. Um, as well as what he does in his own life, because um, like I said, this guy is, I've seen him uh, grow and, and become healthier and more vibrant and your skin and hair and everything just continues to look better and better. You're reversing the aging process. So I want to share some of that with the audience as well. Um, so where, so as we wrap up here, this, this part one, where can, where can people find you? Where can people learn more about what you do, how you do it? To share where, where can we get more Ben? Yeah. Thank you, Devin. Love you and love what you're doing. Uh, everything that we mentioned today, what will make it much easier is my final thought. What makes it much easier is getting quality sleep. All right. <laughs> when you get on, when you get quality sleep, you're going to be more resilient. You're going to think better thoughts. You're going to do everything is going to upgrade. So follow everything Devin's teaching you in the sleep science Academy. And as you get quality sleep, everything we talked about today will upgrade and it'll become much easier. It doesn't become easy. You just, it doesn't become easy you just become better. And that starts with sleep. Mm. Okay. Um, Keto Camp Academy is the best place. Uh, it's a step-by-step -step system. We do monthly coaching calls over 200 videos, and you can learn more about that over at the Keto Camp Academy or ketocampacademy.com. And then I have my Keto Camp podcast. Uh, keep in mind, camp is spelled with the K. Devin has been on the Keto Camp podcast twice. 
So if you want to go listen to that, that would be a great platform. And lastly, our YouTube channel, which is Keto Camp on YouTube. Yeah, you put out such amazing content. You're, you're. I, I don't know how you do it, but you, you just, you're. It, you've interviewed some top people. Uh, I'll, I'll include myself in that. Yeah. <laughs> um, me too. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so yeah, you give so much, and I'm looking forward to, to having you back for part two, so that we can dive into what we didn't get to in this conversation. But you know, I, I'm leaving this this conversation um, feeling inspired, feeling hopeful that people that listen to this are also going to be feeling the same way. And that with that energy, they're going to channel it into to making a change in their life. Um, Amen. So, so thank you for, for being on the show, for making the time. I know you're a busy guy. And, um, and everyone, make sure that you check out uh, the podcast, check out the YouTube channel, check out his Keto Camp Academy, um, you know, books on Amazon. This guy is a wealth of knowledge. And as you couldn't already tell, he's, uh, he's happy to share it and he's giving it away. So you're at, don't not take action. Take make sure you take action, and 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 sign up for all his all his good stuff. Ben, thank you so much for for who you are, for what you're doing in the world, and uh, for being a friend. So I appreciate you coming on, and we'll we'll set up that part two here soon in the near future. Thank you, Devin. You're doing incredible work, changing many lives. So I'm grateful to know you, and I look forward to part two. All right, brother.